if you have a situation where a government generated number is constantly above Wall Street expectations, it's suspicious. How do you trade this? Well, the initial reaction on Friday was dollar up. That to me seems insane, right? Everybody, I hope, that was going to buy dollars because they were afraid they wouldn't be able to borrow them, uh, they've already done so. That's my theory. The dollar index went to the 76% retracement uh, of its recent down move, and it doesn't make much sense for the dollar to go higher, right? Particularly since commodities, particularly oil, I don't know, they seem to be in trouble, right? They seem to be in a lot of trouble. Uh, I continue to want to buy gold. It's very simple. Revisions to productivity numbers, data that I got from really reputable macroeconomics boutiques, productivity reports are showing that wage inflation at the end of last year, Q4, was negative. And wage inflation this year is up 1%. So regardless of what the government is showing about jobs, uh, this whole thing where everybody went to work at home on their laptops uh, and never came back to the office for whatever reason, um, that's coming back to hurt pricing power in the labor market. In other words, one of these macro guys came to the conclusion that, you know, the U.S. worker has less pricing power than they did 10 or 20 years ago, which, you know, that's pretty sobering. So the net net of the net net is Fed funds are at 5%. Powell may have to work off the fake payroll number when he hikes rates, maybe. But, inf but wage inflation is really at 1%. Now, I understand there's more to inflation. You know, food inflation is higher. I'm not sure where rents are because I'm not sure, you know, whether or not people are flooding into rentals because they can't afford houses with mortgage rates. Not sure. But the way I'm saying it to myself is, you know, inflation, you know, uh, sorry, Fed funds at 5%, wage inflation at 1%. So if inflation is a prolonged and continuous rise in prices, where are people getting the additional money from to chase higher prices? And of course, you're starting to see this be reflected in commodities. You know, you're starting to see OPEC panic. You know, I mean, you know, Saudi production cuts uh, and oil's up 1%, right? It's like nothing but sellers, you know, and I'm going to be looking at the gold oil ratio uh, on the market, on the market update later today. Because again, when it comes to gold, I don't know if I can come up with a more perfect macro environment. You know, dollar stable should go lower once the government is done crowding everybody out uh, of financing, meaning the government's going to suck a trillion dollars out of the system. You know, Blackstone, commercial real estate companies already down 3% on the open. So I'm just thinking anybody who's had to buy dollars already did so. And now the government is going to start sucking money out, which could, you know, it, it could hurt bonds. It could hurt stocks. You know, Bitcoin may correct. But at the end of the day, if you have Fed funds with nowhere to go but down with at least some persistent inflation in other places in the economy, that's gold positive, right? And I know people are looking for gold because, you know, uh, TikTok my TikTok has become like a sentiment indicator almost. You know, I'll do a TikTok, I'll get 200 views, you know, if it's boring to people. Uh, I did something on silver, I got 970. I did something on gold, I got 3,800. And with 4,000 followers, that gold number is big. So people are out there looking for gold and it's going to take one news headline maybe even about Blackstone, okay, to get this going. Because, you know, one of the things I've been absolutely adamant about, you know, the debt ceiling drama, you know, it was dramatic. And, you know, I got that both right and wrong. You know, I thought the U.S. political right 
was going to push that up into like a soft default or government shutdown. And as it turned out, there was no drama at all. They they had tons of options. They borrowed four trillion. They threw their credibility, I don't know, partially out the window. But they're going to crowd everyone out. And this is the this is not the end of a crisis because the debt default thing, debt ceiling thing, was never a crisis. It was just a media circus. But when they got to crowd people out, okay, when they got to crowd people out, this is going to have ramifications. Now let's go to crypto. Um, I was on a Wolf podcast, uh, I'm sorry, Twitter space over the weekend. So if they're listening to this, I appreciate them having me on as a guest. It's a pretty big podcast, right? Now it was about tech stocks. So let's link tech stocks and crypto. So all the big tech stocks, you know, Apple, Face, or the FANG stocks, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, Microsoft, all these companies, their stocks have gone up and their valuation are near ridiculous. So equities guys look at valuations. Uh, you know, retail likes to buy high and sell higher. But what I think they all missed was that a dollar in, in stocks is better than a dollar in the bank. Retail has been short stocks. They have been brutally squeezed out. And retail may start chasing because quant funds are chasing right? A slow orderly ascent is like Nirvana for quant models. So they just keep buying it. The FANG stocks and the guys on the Twitter space were saying there's other sectors in tech, you know, that haven't been wildly bid up yet, right? That could go higher. And that may, that's maybe true. That may be true. But, you know, this tech rally isn't going to stop, you know, probably until Labor Day, right? Don't short the quiet market. One, two, summer rally. Three, you know, again, people got to try and hide and the illusion of we're safe is the hallmark of a, a crisis environment, even if this appears to be a soft crisis environment, which I disagree with. Now, as these equity guys were talking about, well, there's this sector, there's that sector, they're doing their thing and I respect their work. And I pipe in, it's like, has anyone looked at Bitcoin mining? Has anyone looked at micro strategy? You know, if a dollar in stocks is better than a dollar in a bank, you know, Bitcoin has done nothing. And as I've noted several times, you know, which was a little bit shocking for the guys on the space, you know, NVIDIA in one week went up $250 billion in market cap. The market cap of NVIDIA, a chip stock related to AI, went up $250 billion in one week. That is larger than the market cap of Ethereum. And ironically, the guys in equities, right, they want to buy Russell 2000, which is IWM in the ETF world. Now, I chat GBT'd Russell 2000, right? Because that's lagged tech, right? Because everyone's like, well, you know, I'm too smart to jump in on the big tech stocks. So I'm going to go buy small caps. I'm going to go buy anything that's outperformed. Well, do you realize it? You know, like, I don't know, 15, 20, 25% of the companies at Russell 2000 have no earnings. So I'm saying to myself, okay, wow, all the equities guys want to buy stuff with no earnings. Huh. <laughs> they better off with crypto. Right. I mean, crypto at least has a value proposition as money. Now, if the crowding out effect causes rates to go up, causes a little bit of a choking effect on speculative assets, that can hurt crypto, which may be why Bitcoin is down this morning. Okay. And I was all into sell in May and go away. And really, what it just should have been is sell in May and preserve capital and don't get chopped up in some crappy market. But at the end of the day, you know, tech stock guys are really not acknowledging Bitcoin or Bitcoin mining. I mean, they did agree with me, right? But that, that's not their thing, right? The, the tech stocks everyone's missing are the tech stocks where you can buy something and get a truckload of Bitcoin without having to go in and royal the spot markets, where, by the way, there is absolutely no liquidity, right? That's like a sub theme, right? Good luck getting liquidity to do big orders between now and Labor Day. Good luck. Okay. Now, crypto could decline because we're in this like tight liquidity environment. Eh, okay. You know, Bitcoin goes to 24K. It'll probably look terrible if even if that happens. Uh, you know what? After hearing the equities guys, after seeing the fake payroll number and knowing what wage inflation actually is, I think that will give you some courage 
or it'll give you some courage. You just have to get it in this range uh, headed into July. Okay. So gold, you know, massive conviction. Crypto, uh, BTFD, right? Because, you know, once people realize that crypto has to catch up to equities, right? I mean, it just, it has to because the equity rally is going to get absurd, you know, because the professionals don't even want to buy it. And equities go up until either institutions are screaming that it's ridiculous and it just keeps going up. That's what happened in 1999. I can't buy it. I can't buy it. Retail starts piling in. I can't buy it. I can't buy it. And then all of a sudden it becomes, I have to buy it. Retail jumps in and that's when you get the black swan in October. But how could there be a better environment for crypto and gold, right? Crypto at a minimum has to catch up to equities. And then once the risk asset, Blackstone, commercial real estate, stock thing, you know, comes to a head, crypto can decouple because crypto is so far away from these other things. So that is the market update.